All right, Junkie Nation, gorgeous Georgian goes come through again. It's fight week. Bellator 264 takes place this Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. The fights take place on Showtime. In the main event is our guest here, John Salter, the number one contender in the Bellator middleweight division. He faces gay guard Musasi. What's up, John? How are you? Great. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Are you pumped up, bro? It's fight week. Like, we turned the corner. It's Monday. Yeah. This is it. This is the big the, the big uh, title fight week for you. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's real now. Through training camp and everything. So, uh, glad to be here and uh, can't wait to get going. By the way, as a wrestler, do you draw any inspiration from seeing uh, Tamara Mensa, David Taylor, and Gable Stevenson grabbing the gold for the United States? I don't know if you even saw Stevenson's uh, wrestling match, but he did it at the last second. Yeah, it was that was awesome. I uh, I love the Olympics. I like watching all of it, you know. Um, but to see those guys go out there and do that and to see America do so well uh, at the Olympics this year in wrestling was just awesome. Nine medals overall, which was the most of any country. Three gold, short of Japan's five gold. But still, yeah, it was a really, really great representation for the United States. And what what does inspire you on Fight Week? Um, is it just maybe chilling out to movies? Is it thinking about the people you do this for? Maybe your family, your training, or 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 is it just John Salter? I inspire myself. Uh yeah, we try to kind of do things outside of fighting to keep keep her mind on other things because you know it's easy to um you know just overwhelm yourself with thoughts about the fight so uh try to keep you know all the fight talk and everything down to the workouts for the day and then uh everything else is like you said movies uh hanging out goofing off and all kinds of stuff like that mm -hmm. what about your weight i mean this is an extra pound and i know to many people it doesn't sound like a big deal but from what I've heard, because I've never stepped into these uh, cages like you maniacs do, that extra pound is about 30 minutes in the sauna. So, you know, uh, did you have to tighten it up even more, you know, this being the biggest fight of your life? Yeah, absolutely. That, that extra pound makes a big difference. And people think, oh, you know, you're cutting 15 pounds, what's 16? But, um, you know, once you get towards the end, it's pretty tough uh, getting weight off. So, uh, you know, I have been a lot better with my weight this time. And uh, I'm, I'm really at a good place where I don't have as much to worry about. And so I don't think that extra pound is going to be a problem for me. John, going back, did you have any sort of preference as far as Lima, Musasi? Uh, was there a matchup you liked more? Are you happy it ended up this way? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it did one way or the other. I didn't really care. You know, I just want to fight for the title. I was glad Masasi won because if Lima did, he was going to have to go back down to 170 and defend his title there, you know. So um, uh, I'm glad that it was Masasi so that we could get the ball rolling and make it happen sooner. A guy like Gegard Masasi has been around for so long, and he's so well-rounded. Do every Does every fighter have some sort of hole in their game or do you focus more on just bringing the best John Salter and, and beating him that way? Um, yeah, I, I got to be the best me I can be. He really, you know, everybody's obviously got holes, but he really doesn't have many. He doesn't have anything that he's just not good. And um, I think the thing that is most impressive about him is just how he doesn't make mistakes. So I've got to not make mistakes. I've got to be able to pressure him and uh, keep him on his back foot and just, you know, keep him worried about what I'm doing rather than opening up his offense. I think if I were a training partner of yours on day one, I'd wait till practice is over and sit next to you and just go, how do you get these finishes? How do you do it? Because everybody else is going for the same thing. It's not like they're not, but somehow you're able to do it. What is it, man? Is it a mindset? Is it preparation? What, may, what is it that allows you to be able to focus and get these? I think it's somewhat of a mindset. You know, I never go into a fight thinking, well, I, there's no way for me to find a finish. But the other thing is just the way I train. I train for finishes. You know, when I'm in the room, I know a lot of good black belts that roll to sweep people, get on top, and lay on them during practice, you know. And I, when I grapple, I grapple to submit somebody every round. When I spar, you know, uh, we don't spar hard, but I spar to be in a position to finish every round, you know. And um, I think that makes the big difference to put me in a spot where I'm usually finding finishes somewhere uh, during a fight. Yeah, it's got to be the mindset because, like, you were just telling us what you're focusing in on practice, and that's 
probably exploiting their weakness, maximizing your strength. You've won 10 of 11. And like Go said, I think of your 18 wins, 17 have been finishes. Man, that's impressive. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of preparation and uh, just trying to get better all the time. You know, I know a lot of guys, when they've been training for a while and fighting for a while, they get to the point where they, they take breaks, you know. And I, I can understand how that's needed, but I don't really step away from training because – um, somebody out there is getting better, so I got to be getting better. And I think that's another thing that I'm constantly finding new ways to finish because not only am I in the gym all the time, but I'm training different people, uh, different levels, and I'm learning a lot from other people all the time. What would beating Gegard Musasi and becoming the Bellator middleweight champion mean to you personally? Um, you know, obviously it's the uh, stamp on the career that I, I need. But, you know, on top of that is – uh, I've been at a high level for a long time, and I think I've been ready for this fight for a long time, but I don't necessarily have the respect from the MMA world um, that I think I deserve. So this is going to get that too. You know, this will not only solidify myself, you know, uh, in the record books as the world champ, but also let everybody know that I am at this level and, uh, you know, I deserve to, should be fighting guys like this. You know, we always hear this is a young man's game, but you're 36, Musasi's 36. You guys definitely deserve to be in there on Friday night. And then just in the past few weeks, TJ Dillashaw, 35, Jose Aldo looked great on Saturday night, 34. Do you think that maybe the athletic prime of an MMA fighter is maybe misunderstood? Like maybe there's something to the younger guy can get more practices in and the body doesn't hurt as much, but does that mean that they're better too? I think, uh, you know, MMA is very much like wrestling. If you can keep your body together and, uh, you know, be able to continue to train hard and train often, then you just get better and better with time, you know. And I know a lot of people, as they get older, they struggle to train as much. They struggle to stay away from injuries. I have not had that issue. And, um, you know, I just I feel like I'm, I'm still getting better all the time. And I think that's what you do until you hit a point where you just can't train John, we're based in Las Vegas, so over here we talk fights, but we also talk gaming. And in this fight, Gegard Musasi is a favorite at minus 350. You're the underdog at plus 275. Do you understand those odds? Do they mean anything to you? Um, are, are they even motivating in any way? Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand them. doesn't mean anything to me. You know, obviously uh, he should be the favorite. You know, he's uh, he's been in a lot of big fights, held a lot of titles, you know. Um, but that doesn't change anything about what I'm going to go out there and do Friday night. Have your friends and family told you, you know, let me just stop by that Mandalay Bay or, or wherever it's local and uh, place some, some money on you, John? <laughs> Nobody say anything to me yet, but I'm sure somebody will be doing it. It happens all the time. You know, gaming's blowing up. It's uh, these DraftKings and fantasy fighting uh parlays whatever it's it, it's out there whether you guys you guys and gals that are inside the cages know this or not there's a lot of money being exchanged outside of it so and i think it's actually helping the sport grow as well um so yeah t just testament to you guys and what you do out there competing you know um it, it's it's what's allowing mma to close the gap on baseball and hockey and maybe one day it can be as popular as basketball, football, and soccer. Yeah, I think it's good for the sport because people that don't have a necessary interest in either fighter all of a sudden do. You know? So it uh, keeps a lot more people excited watching uh, fights of people they may not know. There you go. Well, John, thanks again for joining us here on MMA Junkie Radio, uh, on, spot, on Fight Week especially. I hope you have a safe weight cut, and I hope you have a great fight against Gegard Musasi Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern on Showtime. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on.